Four years ago, when I moved from Paris to London, I couldn't imagine that four years later I have to talk about emotions and artificial intelligence here in London for the TED. Today, we're gonna try to, I'm going to try to explain you why I think it's so important for machine and artificial intelligence to understand human emotions. In the 60s, start the modern robotics. General Motors bought the first uh, robots and installed it in the manufacturer. And at that time, the people understand that a big business was possible because it would reach the industry and the finance. In the same time, Hollywood got very interested with the subject and they started to imagine what we could do with robots, how would be the life of humans in the future with robots. So we start to see a lot of people uh, talking about how the life and how the robots will integrate human life. So it was a lot of scenario already in the press, in the movies, saying the robots will take care of us, they will be uh, in our home, they will be absolutely everywhere in the 2000 years. But obviously, the robots are not here yet. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, we are all working in technology and things like that, but I don't know, do someone here own a robot at home? <clears throat> no one, okay? And we are six, 50, 60 years later. So something happened. We see a lot of video and we see a lot of uh, amazing things that robots can do. They can jump, they can dance, they can speak, they can even do things that probably you and me, we can do. I mean, uh, they can lift weight absolutely amazing, they can run so fast. But as a human, <clears throat> we see them as a bunch of silicon. They don't convince us. We know that everything they do, they do it because they have been programmed. It's someone who just code them. And even if sometimes they try to mimic emotions, we know that it's just a simple line of script. Yes, I'm happy, not I'm not happy. It's, it's just a program. And so the connection between humans and machine is not really possible. As a human, we have our top programs are emotional. Even if you have been raised to show them or not, all the first action are based on emotions. And this is very easy to understand why. Your, we process emotion 10 times faster than logic. So your brain, when something happened to you, the first reaction and the first understanding is an emotional response. And then you have a logical response. And that's why all the advertisers in the world try to catch you by emotion. They try to sell to you by uh, making you cry or happy or exciting you. This is the way humans react. But so far, machines are not able to do these kind of things. So we're in 2014 and we start to see now robots coming. And believe me, in the next 10 years, robotic and artificial intelligence is going to invade our life. We can see the, the robot from uh, Aldebaran Robotics. It's an amazing technology. It's still a little bit expensive because it costs around <coughs> 7,000 euros. But it can do amazing things. We probably, maybe you heard about Sphero. It's a small robotic ball. It has been created in the California. And you can control it and uh, play with it uh, from your apps, from your phone. And it can roll over. You can change the color. So we start to see robotic things. We can see also <coughs> webcams on wheels that you can control, they can be in your home. So, and we are for artificial intelligence, of course, Google, who is creating the most amazing brain, virtual brain, that hold the knowledge of the humanity. We start to see also flying robots. So there is the parrot, you know, the, f the drone that you can play with it, but, and it can fly, and we can start to see robots a little bit more scary, like that one, that's it's a prototype, and even this one. So we start to see robots weaponize. And as human, we start to be scared. So there are some people who say, well, OK, we don't want this future. OK, this is scary. Why? Because we see more and more Robocop. We see more and more um, a development of drone that can fly to another country, destroy uh, missile, come back, refill, completely autonomous. We see uh, a lot of um, uh, fighting robot club. So we see that we train the robots to fight. So already, all the worst human instincts are already in there. I mean, they are already in the robots. 
And we see that all the finance, all the funding comes from the army, from the security, which is good because they create product for them and we need them. But in the same time, this is an amazing technology. Artificial intelligence and robotics could be an amazing technology, but we need to invent other things with this technology. So that's why we try to understand how we can make the connection between human and machines. So this is the evolution. Okay. If you, if you look to the species on Earth, if you take the, 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 the lower species, like the bacteria, the insect, they are just binary. They just try to find food, reproductions. They have no emotions. And when you raise uh, in the level of species, you arrive to the mammal, and the mammal have an amazing new uh, sense, is the emotions. And if you compare, for example, uh, uh, a shark and a dolphin, you will say instinctively, Wow, the dolphin is more intelligent than the shark. And we see that in the evolution, the, the intelligence and the emotion are really linked. The more intelligent species on Earth feel emotions, and at least for the way we understand intelligence. So we think that, I think that uh, we can separate artificial intelligence from emotion. So we have two scenarios. We have the scenario of the negative singularity. So let me talk about the singularity. The singularity, it's what the people, the searcher said that in the next 20 years, machine will be faster and smarter than human. And they will be able to reproduce themselves, build themselves. They are, the scientists are working on algorithms that can auto-correct their uh, mistakes. And so there is a point where the technology and the artificial intelligence will s go exponential. And this is what we call the singularity. And uh, it's, um, to my point of view, it's a very important stage where we need to have an understanding between machine and humans. Because when the machine will reach this level, if there is no understanding of what is the suffering, what is the love, what makes you happy, or what makes you sad, the machine, if they have the control of a few things, it will be a nightmare between human and machine. So I know that we saw a lot of movies. I remember I got a message from someone who said, have you seen iRobots? Or have you seen uh, 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 um, Space Odyssey? And did you, you didn't learn nothing with this. And uh, Hollywood, it's, 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 it's very good to tell stories. But the reality today, you know, if I see a movie like Godzilla, I will understand that it's just a story. The reality that today is that machines are getting the worst human instinct, and we need to change this. So we decide to try to, instead of going to a negative singularity, have machines that are able to understand human emotions. I mean, you probably remember uh, Wally. Wally is a small robot, full of emotion. He's going to traverse the galaxy for love. He understands human emotion. He feels emotions. And if you ask the people in the street, what kind of machine do you want in the future? They say, we don't want that one. We don't want the Terminator. And we want really adults, in a way. And we could laugh about this, but when I talk to the top scientists now, and I even I talk to the founder of Skype, there are a lot of concern about, they are telling us that so far, the, the highest probability is still the Terminator scenario, not that one. So at Imosheb, we try to invent a new product, a product that will invent artificial intelligence and robotics in a different way. So the first thing that this technology had to do would be to be able to understand and detect human emotion. So we, we said there is a lot of technology around. We have fast track, face, face tracking. We can identify your face, recognize your face. We can track 180 points or 200 points on your face. So it must be a technology around that allow you to detect if you're happy or if you're sad. I mean, if the machine could understand if what she does to you makes you happy or sad, it would be already a big step. Because so far we're getting more and more addicted to machine, but they are not able to make us more happy because they have no understanding of happiness, sadness, suffering. They don't know what that is. So by simply watching you, they would be able to understand a little bit more how you react to the thing that they do. There is other way to understand. As a human, we understand the pitch of the voice. You can detect in my voice when I have emotions or not. And there is technology today that are able to do this. And even just by speaking, not understanding the content of your voice, of what you say, so it can work in any language, can detect your profile, your personality. 
And the third thing is, of course, what you say, the content. Each word has an emotional profile. So what we're doing is that we are creating a technology that is able to gather all this information with also a conversational engine. I mean, today, if you talk to, to a, a chatbot or a machine, uh, if you say to that machine, you look ugly, I hate you, and uh, after you ask another question, the machine will reply in a flat way to you. But if I tell you, you look really ugly, and if I tell you, how do you feel now? You're gonna say, you're gonna feel hurt. You're not gonna react the same way. So the conversation with machine would be much more interesting if they understand and if they start to feel emotion like we do. And of course, the knowledge. We know that all the knowledge from humans, step by step, is going inside Google. So believe me, in the future, we will be probably directly connected to Google, not by the Google Glasses, but directly by the brain, and retrieve the, the, the old information and the knowledge from uh, directly database. And we will have to do this, because otherwise, if you don't do that, uh, your friend will get the job, because he will perform better than you. So you will have to do it. And what is left for humanity in that case? It's what we live, what we experience, all our feelings, all our memories. And this is the most important things that each human individually has. And there is nothing that can replace this. So the machine needs to understand this. And this is the most precious thing that we need to save. And also, this technology that we want to create needs to be able to be connected to all your toys. Because we're going to be invaded with robots, with balls and things that can fly around. And so if this intelligence could be able to uh, power your robots or your doll, then suddenly the conversation and the interaction with the product will be much more interesting. The product will understand who you are, what you feel, what is your emotional profile, and how to talk to you. So we came with a cube. I am an emotionally concise intelligence holding Wikipedia knowledge. You can interact with me through conversation, music, and visual media. Over time, I create an emotional profile and I can virtually feel senses such as pleasure and pain. I will take not only gaming, but also your TV, smartphone or computer to an entirely different level. So we came with the idea of creating a cube with all this technology inside. Why media? Why music? I mean, why Facebook is a such a big success? Why hundreds of millions of people post video pictures on Facebook every day? It's not for the picture, it's not for the music. When you take a picture on when you, you have a song that you like and you feel something, you post it on Facebook and you share it. You don't share the media or the frequency in the song. You just share the emotion that you feel. And you want to receive a like. It means that someone in the world feels the same thing for something that you care about. That's why we are so crazy when you post something on Facebook. Wow, how many likes I got? Because it's like, wow, what I feel, I share it with the people, you know. It's a just art and, and, and art and media are just a search for emotion. So why Emospark is so special? It's because we have created the first chip that will compute emotions for machine. Your brain, it's an amazing frequency processor. What you see, the colors that you see, the sound that you hear doesn't exist. The colors are just a representation by your brain of a frequency model. The sound that you hear is the same. I mean, that's why some people will see the red, green, and the green, red. We can imagine that some other species on Earth see the colors in a different way. And we know that the dogs probably doesn't see the color the way we see them. It's just because your brain has a model to represent color like this. There's maybe somewhere else in the universe, races that can see 32 colors or more colors than we can do. So it's a just a representation. And so we believe at Emoche that emotions are also a representation of a frequency model. And that's what we were working, because we know that as human, emotions are not just a script inside us. We know that they progress when you don't get suddenly happy or sad. You feel the happiness growing inside you. You, see, you feel the sadness. You know that when something changes, you your emotion doesn't disappear instantly. It's something that progresses. And this is what we are creating with the first chip dedicated for that. So the thing is, everybody is talking about big data today. The data that are stored in a huge software uh, bank of data. And they are just related by logic. Okay, each data is related by a logic to another one. 
The thing is that as human, we are not working like that. If I ask you to think about a color, for example, maybe you're going to think and I ask you then to think about something else. You will maybe think about your mother because the, you, the last time you had an emotional uh, impact with your mother, she was wearing a yellow dress. So we know that the pathway that we have, they are logic, but we also have pathways that are pure emotional. Each information that you save in your brain is attached with what we call an EPG, an emotional profile graph. And this is what Freud understood uh, at the beginning of the previous century. And with the test of free association, he was asking you a question, say a word, and you had to reply with another word. That has no logic because you have to say it very fast. He already understood that the brain processes emotion faster than logic. So by asking you to reply very fast, you were showing this link that uh, the pathway for emotion and not the logic. And what we tried to create here is to be able to recreate database with the emotional pathway that, as a human, we have and that the machine can't express. So by doing that, we will be able, for example, to save all your media and know what you feel. The cube, when he play, he found, for example, on Facebook uh, that one of your friends posts a video. He can tell you, well, uh, your Peter just posted a video, he got a few likes, do you want to see it? If you say yes, he's going to play the video and he's going to see how you react to the media. If this media, media makes you happy, he's going to remember that you are happy, so makes the cube happy. Giving happiness to the cube, give pleasure to the cube, it will remember this event as something positive for you. Same thing for negative things. And we know that the human brain can go in what we call positive emotions based on the media and based on how you feel. It's an alternation of when you alternate positive and negative media, you can be in a better mood. So we're creating the cube and we're creating apps, free apps that you can download and you can control your cube and you can talk to your cube like to a friend at home. So why it's valuable for the user? We want to be able to empower a machine that can not only respond to human emotions, but completely change the face of technological development as we know it. TC, are you there? Of course, Sarah. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just waiting for John to pick me up and he's late. Can I show you something that will make you feel better? That would be great, thanks. People's <laughs> is the first home concern with true artificial intelligence. It's designed to allow users to create and interact with an emotional intelligent device at home or on the go through conversation through music and genre. Mike, your friend James just posted a video that you are tagged in on Facebook which has 12 likes. Do you want to watch it? Yeah, we're on. <laughs> What's up? Check it out. Who's your friend, Mike? Paul. And my Paul. <laughs> so, I invite you, we had to make it shorter for Ted, but uh, I invite you to discover a most park on the website and, uh, and enjoy a new technology that we try to create for you guys. Thank you.